to the Grassland String Band. I hear banjo, Martha. Mm -hmm. I hear fiddle. I do. But I hear something else. Now, this Athens, Georgia based group has just released a new EP, The Echo Mountain Sessions. And as we wind down our Closer Look Indie Music Summer Series, we welcome members of the Grassland String Band. They're in our studio. We welcome Michael Lasowski, Todd Ferguson, and Jody Daniels. Welcome. Welcome. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. Great to be here. Y'all are very talented. So let's start out by seeing who plays what. And we'll start with you, Michael. What do you play? Well, I uh, play the guitar, the mandolin, and I sing. All right. Jody. Uh, I play predominantly the banjo. Well, that's actually all I play now for the last eight years. Originally guitar uh, and singer. Yeah, slacker. <laughs> <laughs> and Todd? I am a drummer in a string band. Ah, I like <laughs> drummer. You know, the, you know the joke about the drummer, right? Which one? Well, <laughs> <laughs> what does the drummer say when they're just about to kick him out of the band? Hey, guys, I wrote a song. <laughs> <laughs> How did you all come together? Jody will let you answer that. I was uh, finishing up a bluegrass band that I was in and looking for something to do, and I happened to walk into a uh, barbecue shack where they were doing a jam session. And uh, that night, uh, Michael walked in with a mandolin and uh, just wowed the place. Um, knowing what I know, I walked up to him and I said, uh, Who are you? And uh, do you play with anybody? And he had nobody. And so I took him, and uh, from there we just sort of grew uh, into something. Michael, I have to ask, you just strolled into a barbecue joint with your mandolin? That's what you did? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's like I didn't have much money, and so I figured if I played a song, they'd give me free food. And, yeah, that's what. That's how – no, it, it was a Thursday night bluegrass jam at this barbecue place, and I had no friends. I just moved to Athens, and I was pretty uh, down down and out on my, 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 my luck. And so I strolled in there, uh, and I had no idea what was going to happen. It was a bunch of old dudes playing, <laughs> Thank bluegrass, you, Michael. playing, playing bluegrass Ouch. music. And uh, I'm well. I mean, I've been hanging out with old dudes since I was young because that's Thank that's, you who, again, play, that's, how, that's who plays bluegrass music. But I love it because there's a lot of wisdom, there's a lot of experience in that. And then, uh, then you know, lo and behold, my luck changed because of that night. Walked in there, met Jody, and then all of this, and now we're sitting here in NPR. <laughs> See how it all worked out? <laughs> You've really made it now. Um, what about your name? How'd you get the name Grassland String Band? Oh, wow. Jody, can I say that? Well, we just... Uh, <laughs> we had no name. We really just debated, and uh, I mean, it took us a year to come up with that, but... Um, a year? Well, so well, what'd you call well, yourselves well, in the meantime? Seems like. <laughs> I got I got something to say that. No, it was a holding name. We didn't have a drummer yet. We were a true string band. And Jody, like, started printing off things that said Grassland String Band on them. And he's, like, showing it to me. And I'm like, all right, well, I guess we'll use this for a little while. And it just stuck. And I tried changing the name, like, five times. But they're like, well, we're already established. We can't. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> so popularity, we re- the popularity of the band just kind of took off immediately. And it was really hard to change. Uh, I mean, originally we were kind of bluegrass because uh, it's what we knew. And we were comfortable with it, and we didn't have to think about it too much, but it kind of grew from there. And Todd really likes saying he's the drummer in a string band, yeah. so he, and <laughs> you know, let us change the name. It's, it's all about irony for us, you know. Yeah. We're hipsters. Well, you describe your music as Amerigrass, so define that for us. It's not quite bluegrass? So it's a it's a juxtaposition of Amerigrass, uh, excuse me, of Americana and bluegrass. So okay. uh, we've kind of, like you said, started off with bluegrass and moved towards um, more Americana kind of a feel now. So that's what you'll hear on, on the Echo Mountain Sessions. And how many, because you're, you're three right here, but there are more members. How many in the band total? Six. So, wow. talk, so Jody, talk about, you know, being able to, the, the chemistry, everyone being on the same page. Drummers really want to hold the beat, carry the rhythm. You know, yeah. then well, the guitar can, player's like, no, follow me. How do you no, guys get well, on? Well, I can tell you <laughs> that the day that I, uh, I mean, Todd and I attend church together. He's a choir director, and I've known him for a long time. But uh, Michael and I were, uh, we were singing and practicing at the church. And uh, Todd walked in and uh, sat down. And we, we have a really nice stage. There's a drum kit up there. And Michael was uh up there and I'm up there and Todd walks in really likes what he hears but he thinks it's kind of out of sync uh, tempo wise so he, he says you know let me jump up on the drums there and I'm thinking oh my goodness another drummer who thinks he can do bluegrass <laughs> um, but it was fantastic um, and after Michael convinced me that I had no choice really well you know also Todd Todd 
<laughs> in all your musical training turns out to be a drummer. Todd's also a fabulous organist, like trained master or what a doctor, you know, <laughs> yeah, he's going to, he's basically going to take over the world with organ and drumming. But, um, you know, Todd brought it, brought in this huge dynamic with the drums and it just stuck. I mean, and it really, we, we couldn't keep rhythm without him. <laughs> well, Todd, let's get you into this conversation because, mm-hmm. you know, the grassland string band, you mm-hmm. know, and, and you come in and, Primarily, what you know, besides keeping the beat, you know, but how do you make sure you get, you know, get your little love up in there as well, you know, because the strings take over. Sure, yeah. My uh, role, and I learned this from my dad, who was a drummer, you know, just uh, I'm, I'm there to support. I'm not there to stand out. You know, there's plenty of other really virtuosic uh, lead players in this band that I just love to sit back and and holler and, and keep four on the floor while they while they wail, you know. So uh, just keeping that together is, is enough for me. I'm not one that wants to be in the spotlight, you know. Now, you all have an EP coming out today, the Echo Mountain Sessions, as we've mentioned. I was named after Echo Mountain Recording Studio in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, why is that studio important to you guys? Well, we uh, originally, uh, our first engineer, Will Manning, had interned there, and he recorded our first uh, album before the feast uh, in Athens at Chase Park and Studio 1093, and so we heard about it through that. And then uh, Amy Ray recorded her last record there, her solo record from the we, Indigo Amy Girls. Amy Ray of the Indigo Correct, Girls, correct? Right? Yeah, and uh, you know, grew up loving her ever since I was in sixth grade, and and so we saw some video that they had done um, uh, it, from their sessions at Echo Mountain, and we were kind of in love with the place. We found out. A lot of uh, other influences that we really love had recorded there and, and it had a you know grade A reputation amongst musicians and especially as a live room because it's a it's a converted church and uh, so Jody has a little bit more to say about that. Well, it's a converted Methodist church and uh, I am the son of a Methodist preacher who who served the Western North Carolina F, uh, district areas and so uh, when we went there to do a little. About a few months earlier, we had gone just to see what it was like, and they gave us a little tour. And you walk into what used to be the main church, and uh, up on the uh, the, the stained glass is still there, and it's beautiful. And uh, I knew that I was going to record Boom Boom, which uh, is on this album, and I kept thinking, ah, this is this is the perfect place to get that emotion behind that song, and uh, the fact that uh, my dad probably was in that church at one time and a lot of that had to do we we talked about the financial side of it and uh, i kind of put it off to the side and when we made the commitment to do this album todd came to me and he said jody i hate to do this to you but i want you to think about that place and think about doing boom boom in that place and then we made it happen what is it about bluegrass or americrass if you guys, you guys call it what are the distinct characteristics of this genre that sets itself obviously apart from any other genre. Yeah, okay, so bluegrass really is rooted in the blues and Appalachian music. Uh, I take I take a lot of um, pride in American music because there's such a richness in the history and diversity of the music. So I started off as a bluegrass player. Uh, Jody was country and bluegrass. Um, and Todd, what did you like? Uh, Almond Brothers, Amy Ray, you know, <laughs> hey, just roots music. You know. Yeah, so it was just roots music in general. So really, uh, the foundation of of my learning was in bluegrass, and then we just kind of go from there. But it's really foundational because it's very simple but very virtuosic music at the same time. You mentioned the song "Boom Boom" is on this album. Um, let's listen to that. Again, that song is called Boom Boom. What was the inspiration for that? I think it was just a, uh, a combination of things. I've, being the son of a preacher, I tend to preach a lot in my writing. <laughs> and um, as you get older, uh, you start to think about the kinds of things that you want people to, to hear. Um, I have a favorite quote, and it's a guy named P.D. James that wrote it. He said, um, God gives every bird worms to eat, but he doesn't throw them into the nest. 
And so it's it's kind of that. It's like saying, hey, you know, it's all out there for you. You just have to go out there and get it. And uh, so that's what this song is, is I want people to know that uh, you can succeed. You can be anything you want to be. I have two older daughters that I... And I, and I have a seven-year-old granddaughter, and I keep thinking, what do I want that person to hear 20 years or 30 years when I'm not here? And so all of that kind of emotion came into that. If I can ask, guys, can I have your ages, Jody? Yes, I'm 61. Todd? 41. And Michael? 25. Okay. Wow. So there's there's some, there's some generations there. Mm-hmm. And, Michael, although you were joking, saying, you know, you walked in, saw some old guys, but... Is it does that make it unique having the different ages, or does it make it challenging sometimes when you're trying to come up with some new music? It's, it, it it really doesn't actually challenge the musical side of things. Uh, it actually um, frees it because uh, in this age that we live in, we're a very genre driven culture. Uh, we're very much like a look aesthetic driven culture, uh, and so for me as a young guy, a lot of people tell me like, "Oh, when are you gonna get some young guys to play with?" And, you know, it might be more marketable or something like that. Really? Yeah. And also, like, you know, it, yeah, it's it's just the, the, the thing. It's like, are you going to be sexy? Are you going to be cool? But the, the reality is when you're playing with multi-generational, it opens up the floor for the kind of venues you play, the fact that you can play to many different cultures, to many different ages, and that it just caters to everybody, you know? Jody, what did... Is it about the Athens music scene? So many great bands have come out of Athens, obviously, but there seems to be a nice little collection of just independent indie groups down there. Yeah, I'm going to let Todd answer that question. Well, Todd, what is it about Athens? What is it about Athens? One of the things that's so exciting being a part of this band uh, since its inception a few years ago is just, you know, I've been a fan of that scene you're describing for such a long time. Uh, and, And now just getting to be a part of that, is is just really humbling and thrilling and um you know m- musicians in Athens really do enjoy collaboration they do support one another uh one of my favorite things when we play in town is just looking out and seeing all the other amazing musicians that are in the crowd that just come to see you you know and 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 supporting each other in that way and then of course you know you can play any night of the week and in multiple venues and there's amazing places uh to be heard and and different kinds of crowds come to different places but it's just a it's just a great town with great support studio recording right there and John Keane who brought up a lot of that things you know he's mastered our record and he has his handprint all over REM and Indigo Girls from an early age so that's just a thrill to be a part of. So are you all content staying within that music scene as it is or do you have aspirations to be signed to a major record label? Well, I think it's it's a when we're on the road, we've toured around the southeast a little bit, and, you know, it's kind of cool to say you're from Athens because, you know, people recognize that name, you know, and, and maybe it draws some people in. But, uh, you know, we have aspirations to, to move beyond there and may, maybe represent the city a little bit on a, a bigger bigger stage. Yeah, and I think that, you know, at this point, we're not ready for the major record label scene. Um, I mean, if, if we're offered that, that's great, but oftentimes that comes with a lot of caveats. Um uh, a lot of strings. A lot right? of strings attached. And and honestly, the freedom that we have to express ourselves and to find ourselves and also mature and grow in booking and management by our, on, our, on our own, uh, it just frees us to be who we want to be. Well, right that's now. a question we've asked every artist about being independent because you have freedom, you have a little bit more control. And sometimes when you sign to a major label, you lose that. Is that part of it then? Or I mean, yeah, that's the heart of it. And we 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 just really want to be able to be who we are, be the multi generational band that really can't be pigeonholed, which most bands become once you're in a major label. I've seen that for years, decades. Just that that look. I want to be something, and I know we want to be something that rises above that storm, and we can just we can we can really encourage people just who we are. What is it about playing live? Uh, For me, it's just, uh, I mean, at this point, I don't understand why uh, at the age of 61 that uh, I get to enjoy the success that I have, because I've been doing this a long time, but this is uh, obviously the the, the best thing I've ever been involved in. But for me, just the thrill of playing with such wonderful musicians like this and looking out and seeing, uh, and we alluded to it before, just, just seeing the diversity and the age differences and knowing that we're appealing to all those people and uh, there's no other feeling like it. It's just wonderful. We've had, uh, you know, 
we had an experience uh, just playing in, in Madison Tuesday night, and it wasn't a huge crowd. It was an outdoor venue on a, on a school night. Uh, but there were some families there enjoying it, and we just got a message from one of those today, uh, you know, saying that that was just really important and a healing thing for their family just to feel that. So we feel like our music really connects with people, really, you know, takes them away from their troubles for a little bit, and it just gives them an opportunity just to kind of breathe it in, and, and that energy comes back and forth, and we really enjoy that. Michael, you get the last word. Yeah, I think that um, playing live and being with this band, it, it really makes me happy um, it, it just to play music in general. And with these guys, we get to really express our joy, our our full range of emotions. And I feel like it's what we're born to do. Wow. Well, good luck to you guys with everything. And uh, thanks for coming in and taking the time. You were listening to Michael Lasowski, Jody Daniels, Todd Ferguson, members of the Grassland String Band, talking about their music, of course, as we wrap up our Indie Summer Music Series. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Talking with a burned-out waitress about the things.